retire cannot dictate attitude or approach. We've had some really intense practices um, in past the last couple of days, but the intensity cannot wane as we wear helmets. And so that was a focus of ours. Um, there's still a lot of work that needs to get done. Oftentimes we just shift our focus to skill development and drills that are less attire specific. Uh, we're in helmets today. We had an opportunity to, to introduce two minute, for example. Hello everyone and welcome to Training Camp Wrap Up presented by the UPMC Health Plan. I'm Mike Pursuta along with Craig Wolfley. That was Mike Tomlin. This was day nine on campus, day seven on the field, but Wolf, not day three in pads and yet a little feisty again. Yes, we still got a little chippiness. That's probably, uh, you know, get a couple of get right moments from yesterday. You know, people want to exact a little bit of uh, vigilante. <laughs> nah, it's, you know, it's just, it, it is what it is, you know. And I think with the heat and everything else, it's just guys, you know, trying to exert the, their alpha status and go at it. Look, we're competing. Everybody's competing. You're pe competing for a job. As Mike talked about, you've got to will, as Chuck Noll always used to say, you've got to will your mind over your body. You're, you've got to will yourself to do a lot of these things because you're tired. And sometimes when you're tired, you get a little, you know, a little bit of bada bing and bada boom with somebody, and then before you know it, you're rolling around on the ground. But it happens. It's not the old mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't, don't matter. matter. <laughs> yes, you're right. Exactly so. Well, there was some stuff that uh, I think mattered today, some exciting stuff, particularly at the end of today's festivities. Uh, the Steelers were at the two-minute drill for the first time. Now, I got to put an asterisk on what we saw because in both instances, Mike Tomlin influenced the drill as he is wont to do, and he reserves the right to do because he wants to see them get the reps. He doesn't want to necessarily see the defense get a stop right away and then, okay, well, there goes that opportunity to practice that. So uh, he greased it a little bit. Uh, he he did. shoved it along, but they did two drills. Uh, the objective was to go 53 yards in one minute and 33 seconds for a touchdown with one timeout at the disposal of the offense. The first team group led by – Justin Fields uh, wound up getting it in the end zone. Uh, Justin Fields, five of six for 50 yards passing. He also rushed for three. Now, the, the two asterisk plays, Wolf, on one of them, uh, T.J. Watt had a sack. One of those, you write down sack in air quotes on your notes. Right. I know Justin Fields is elusive, but T.J. Watt's pretty good at getting the quarterback down, too. Yeah. My money was on T.J. in that instance. And then another one. A swing pass to running back Jalen Warren. This is after the timeout had been exercised. Uh, Warren was stopped in the field to play, and Mike Tomlin said, play it like it's OB, first down. So he gave him some extra seconds. But I'll tell you what, the wait was worth the orchestration because uh, second and goal from the floor, Fields drilled a laser to George Pickens, who went up under the crossbar over Patrick Queen and came down with the ball in the end zone with 12 seconds left on the clock touchdown ball game it really was amazing again it was another tremendous catch by a man who just seemingly just makes circus catches left and right that's why i like to call him circus george but the fact of the matter is this young man is gaining in stature and in maturity and you can see his route running he's working hard at his route running and he is just one of those exceptional talents that really shines and especially in big moments he's starting to get that big moment that we'll see if you can parlay this into the great year that I think quite possible, but there's a lot of good things that you watch him do that he is working on about that precise route running and being able to do what he does best with those magic hands, man. That's catch that ball. Yeah, it was uh, really an impressive catch. It was a, it was Fields' fastball. It was tight coverage by Queen. But uh, once again, Wolf, I, I wasn't a physics major, but when you're bigger and you can jump higher than the guy covering you, I think you have an advantage, an ability to get open. I think that was demonstrated quite ably in that moment with 12 seconds left when he went high like that. Uh, that was a big stretch. It was something to see, and uh, I'm going to uh, roll the dice and guess that it was something to hear about too, which is why we sent our colleague Rob King, uh, this new play-by-play -play voice of the Steelers Radio Network, down to the field to speak with George Pickens. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Uh, George, first of all, offense has really showed the last couple of days, seven shots and the two-minute drill today, very effective. Yeah, man, uh, we're just going to keep working, man. Uh, you know, we kind of keep a tally of it because it's based off what we eat every day in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. dinner. So whether you get a grade B dinner or you get a grade A, which is like steak and potatoes. So for us, you know, we just come out and keep working. 
So was that catch worth something today on the two-minute drill? Yes, it was. It was for first. It was worth the touchdown that we needed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, crowd, uh, the teammates, you know, I love making catches and making plays simply because I just want to boost the morale of the offense. Do you feel the energy here in the crowd when you're at Latrobe? Uh, yeah, it feels like a, uh, it actually gives you the game setting without giving you the game. You know what I mean? Uh, you got people all on the, on the ramp. You got people in the stands out here. Uh, it gives you the game setting. So I feel like it really helps us a lot, a ton, actually. One of the things that I've really enjoyed in watching practice is that after drills, the defensive backs and the receivers are patting each other in the helmet or maybe working with each other. Hey, you need to do this or you need to do that. A lot of feedback, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, lots of feedback. Uh, I probably say in previous years, like strictly my first year, it was just more, you know, guys having their way or defenses on one side, offenses on one side. And it was, uh, you can lose the competition that way. You know what I mean? From both sides, guys forget to compete. So uh, this year, you know, we just compete to the highest level. What do you think of the defensive backs you've been going against? Oh, uh, yeah, they're super, super good. We got JP, of course. Uh, picked up a new guy, Dante Jackson. Super good, fast, twitchy DB. Uh, we still got a lot of older guys that we had from injury last year. Trice, uh, Cam Sutton, got him back. He's played with Steelers for like four or five years. Uh, so, yeah, we got a few vets and a, and a, and a prolific young guys. You know, uh, George, uh, you're seeing like a physical offense out there and, yeah. and, and an offense that wants to set the tone. How do you feel about that kind of offense? Oh, I feel great uh, about that just specifically because, you know, last year and previous years, that's like the Steelers' motto, first off. And uh, you just, when you play below that and that's the motto of the team, it just, you know, kind of disappoints you personally for both sides of the ball, offense and defense. So uh, this year, ground and pound, physical, getting on blocks, making plays downfield. Uh, that's going to be the most important for sure. Love to hear that, and I know fans love to hear that. Lastly, as you adjust to a new offense out here, you've been through the OTAs. Is there still a period of adjustment, or do you feel like you and your teammates had the system down pretty well? Uh, I feel like we have it down pretty well. Uh, like I said, continually every day we're working. So uh, some new plays get put in. You got to review and you got to study. So every day you got to, you know, lock in and work. George, thanks for the time. For sure. Mike, back to you. Thanks, Kinger. Great stuff there from uh, George Pickens, uh, both uh, during the drill and after. Some other uh, tidbits from that drill. Uh, the Steelers opened in the dime defense. Uh, Patrick Queen was the lone linebacker in that six defensive backs dime defense, but uh, they did not deploy, for whatever reason, Minka Fitzpatrick, Deshaun Elliott, and Dante Jackson. So uh, that meant that uh, safety Nate Medors, uh, cornerback Anthony Averett, and quarterback Corey Trice Jr., uh, Wolf, all got a chance to participate. Some guys who are not established here getting a look in a, well, if it was baseball, they'd call it a high leverage situation. Right, exactly so. And the guy that, that uh, I've been interested in watching is Corey Trice, just to, see his, just to see his physical movements, how he's running, how he's able to contend and go out there and compete because you, you never know. I mean, you know that when you come back from a knee injury, it takes a little while for you to be able to really groove and feel comfortable knowing that that knee has is, is been, you know, cleared is one thing, but being able to clear it yourself mentally and get out on the field and test it out and, and, and everything else, that's a whole different matter. And I think right now he's looking he's looking pretty comfortable. He's one of those guys that you look at. And then you got Anthony Everett, who I think him and Graylin Arnold are doing some nice work out there, along with, of course, Beanie Bishop that, you know, uh, is another guy, but these young guys, they got an opportunity to really compete and get after it. Yeah, Beanie was uh, out there with that uh, first team dime defense as well as Joey Porter Jr. Uh, and DeMonte Casey. That rounded out the six. The uh, the second team drive, uh, same scenario, uh, 53 yards, a buck 33, one timeout, needing a touchdown. Kyle Allen led that, and uh, I mentioned uh, in the previous possession, T.J. Watt had what would have been a sack. And then right. Justin Fields ran away. Well, Kyle Allen, this actually, he was he was sacked. The pocket collapsed. He had nowhere to go. I, I don't think they actually took him to the ground, but the play ended right there. And uh, Mike Tomlin intervened and said, no, no, completed pass, 15 yards, first <laughs> down. That was on third and 10 when the thing went south. So it would have been very challenging to maintain the possession. But uh, Tomlin gave him 15 free and a first down. Uh, it came down to uh, second and goal from the five, and uh, there will be controversy after this one. At least there should be. Allen uh, throws a pass for wide receiver Jere Jerry. It gets tipped by defensive back Thomas Graham Jr. Mm -hmm. Now, the ball got tipped. Jerry bobbled it and then appeared to get his feet down in bounds, at least according 
We had six officials on the field today. Uh, the officials here signaled touchdown. But I'm here to tell you, Wolf, my man Chaz Palla from TribLive.com, one of the great sports photographers of all time, of any time. Absolutely. He went through his camera frame by frame, and with the bobble, two feet did not get down in bounds. So this thing was called a touchdown on the field, but if they further review it, no touchdown. Unless, of course, you plead to Mike Tomlin, and, of course, he's going to rule as he will rule. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised, actually, they didn't call it off because they could have taken some more reps. Well, was, that's true. still a little time on the clock. That's true. But I thought, by, from my own eyes, just watch it from up top, Kyle Allen did a nice job. I was really impressed with what he did. Matter of fact, if I recall, he had a very nice two-ball thrown, that being a ball that is thro- arced over uh, the linebackers, dropped in front of the safeties. He threw it with a very nice touch to somebody I can't remember because – the problem is when you're broadcasting, you got to like talk, and then you're watching, and you got discussions going because we got to do two going, things at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you know, and it, you know what? I'm not real good at that unless I'm at a buffet and then I'm eating, and that's when I multitask my best. Well, you know, handle what you can when you can. There you can. There uh, you can. One of the other exercises today that got my attention, they actually kicked the ball on kickoff. Now they've been, they've been gradually ramping up this new uh, crazy kickoff scenario that the NFL uh, has adopted. Uh, they walked through it a couple of days ago. Then yesterday there was some actual uh, setting up of blocks and things of that nature. Today they kicked the ball off. Uh, we'll get to the details of that in a minute. But <laughs> suffice it to say, special teams coordinator Danny Smith's got uh, a long way to go and a short time to get there. I don't have a lot of questions, to be honest with you. I've studied it hard. Uh, if I get an email that has an adjustment to it or something like that, which I don't expect, uh, it's a rule. It's in. We better embrace it. We better love it if we're going to excel in it. Um, and, and that's a fact. You know, I hear these people say this, about this might happen. I'm not worried about them mites, man. I'm full go. I'm full head of steam. We're going to excel in this, and, and, and our players are learning to love it as well as I. Now, when you're talking about the rules at, at post-practice meetings, things like that, are you talking about this new rule every single day? All the time. Yeah. All of them. Just as an example, uh, you know, now one of the changes in the rule is all balls in the end zone must be down. You know, those days with the crossbones and running off and letting that ball sit, they're over. That's a recovered ball for a touchdown. So now, you know, we ain't going to be able to do that. So, you know, new guys coming in, they do that in college. We do that in the pros. So now just a simple thing like that. You know, you must down every ball. And I start different meetings with different rules, with different things, because I want them. I, I just don't believe that we can excel if we don't understand it. You know, I don't want them out there guessing, thinking. I don't want the officials saying, move up, move back, you're missing line. I teach alignments. I teach everything because I want us to know it. We don't need that help from the officials. We understand the rules and we'll play according. You know, two things got my attention. And, by the way, love listening to Danny Smith. Oh, yeah. I could listen to that guy read the phone book. Uh, (laughs) A couple things that got my attention uh, on the return team. You know, you have to have so many guys up five yards from the defense. But they were lined kind of in a seven 2-2 2-2 two, two look. They had two tight ends behind the first wave and then two return guys, which I think we're going to see a lot. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. It's going to start tonight with the Hall of Fame game, and people are going to be dissecting that. Hopefully there's going to be a number of kickoffs that they have some opportunity to study. But I've also heard it from some other people that one of the things they're adjustments are going to do is to take the, the guys that are standing around the five-yard line. They're going to move them up to the 10. Or even, you know, a little bit between the 10 and 15, depending. To trying to catch come the pooch. Exactly. Because that's so. one of the other things I saw the Steelers try today. They kicked the ball off its side flat on the ground. Right. As opposed to upright on a tee. And those were uh, kind of, they were trying to bounce it where you have to bounce it and then see what would happen. One time it actually bounced all the way into the end zone and they had to run, go get it. Uh, one time it was caught in the air. And another time it was fielded on one hop. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the Hall of Fame game tonight. I usually don't pay a lot of attention to that. Uh, well, I, what you're going to pay a lot of attention to is the kickoffs. Let's tune it in for a little while, <laughs> see how many kicking plays there are. Just first blush, do you think there will be a lot more excitement in the return game and a lot more returns for touchdowns? I don't know what to think. I mean, we've we've watched it, like, flesh it out a little bit here on the fields. And I'm still looking at it going, you still got bunch up. You still got people getting mangulated and, in the, you know, in the process of, of – getting to some sort of pile up uh it's going to be interesting to see how the kickers adapt and it was watch i was watching uh uh the, the wizard of boz you know when he went to kick off that off the ground or off the tee whatever it is when they lay it flat it's a different kicking motion it's a i was watching him it was almost like he was like trying to get a a, a putter type thing 
you know, where he's whipping the, the hip around just a little. It was just very intricate. I'm thinking, I wonder if that messes with his extra point kickoff, regular kickoff style that it had been. You know, I mean, there's a lot of th- lot going into this. And so how it fleshes out is going to be of paramount importance tonight and having an opportunity to see it at high speed because, let's face it, this is still all practice speed. Game speed's another animal altogether. I think there's going to be more returns for touchdowns, and I, I think if you're going to ask kickers to try to make tackles, it's going to be uh, too much of an ask. Well, I can tell you. You know, I, they're kind of back there all by themselves. They're already the deep safety. Well, and back in my day, I had an opportunity to visit one of those kickers, and it was really a lot of fun. <laughs> and when you say visit. I came around the wall, on the back side of the wall, and it was a little kicker who had body like an upside-down <laughs> light bulb, and he had one bar, and when I came through clean, and he was the only guy there, his eyes got big as saucers, and right before I hit him, he screamed, No! <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Can we reveal the identity of this? It was Mr. Tony Frisch okay. from the Houston Oilers, a soccer styler. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, I must say. And he got up, he's screaming, and he goes, you didn't have to do that. I said, you didn't have to be there. <laughs> it's the goodest place as any to call it a day. Uh, Friday night lights tomorrow night. Uh, gear up for all the excitement that that annually involves. Uh, until then, for Craig Wolfley, I'm Mike Pursuta, and this has been Training Camp Wrap-Up. Presented by the UPMC Health Plan.